Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season we're discussing issues that I've personally wrestled with with regard to the faith, and today we'll discuss what, ultimately, the fulfillment of all desire really is. This is a question that's been circling in my head for years, ever since I read the book The Fulfillment of All Desire. I say this because from what I can recall, I don't think a single word of that book had anything to do with desires or how and why we can hope or expect to have them fulfilled. I certainly don't blame its author, Ralph Martin, for this. I'm well aware that often book titles are determined by the publisher, not the author. Still, it got me thinking about the question. What fulfillment does Jesus offer for the desires of man? First, let's look at what the Gospels have to say about the fulfillment of desires. Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened to you. For every one that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth. And to him that knocketh it shall be opened. Or what man is there among you, of whom his son shall ask bread, will he reach him a stone? Or if he shall ask him a fish, will he reach him a serpent? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father who is in heaven give good things to them that ask him? Matthew 7, 7 7-11 Here we can see it clearly spelled out that God intends to give good things to people. It doesn't say precisely when, if you'll notice, but the implication does seem to be there that the good things which people ask for will be what they receive, not other good things that are irrelevant to their needs and desires. And will not God revenge his elect who cry to him day and night? And will he have patience in their regard? Luke 18, 7 This verse has a straightforward interpretation, that God will give justice to the people who've been in grave need and have appealed to him for the fulfillment of their longings. This is even more obvious when we see that the verse follows the parable of the unjust judge, saying, There was a judge in a certain city who feared not God nor regarded man, and there was a certain widow in that city, and she came to him, saying, Avenge me of my adversary, and he would not for a long time. But afterwards he said within himself, Although I fear not God, nor regard man, yet because this widow is troublesome to me, I will avenge her, lest continually coming she weary me. Luke 18, 2-5 Did the judge give her justice because it was what she deserved? That That's not clear from the parable. For all we know, she might not have deserved it. He gave her justice because she was bothering him. Now, Jesus is saying that God is more patient than this man, but will still give things to those who appeal to him eventually. So, does this apply only to things that we deserve? If it did, none of us would get anything, so that can't be the meaning of Jesus' words. So, Jesus must be saying that, far from mere justice, he's offering us things that we don't deserve, but desire. We just need to remember that God is the one making this offer. No one else can give us true fulfillment. In all the reading I've done on heaven, it's amazing how often words like love and peace come up, while happiness, thrills, and our wishes are rarely mentioned. It all paints a picture that sounds a lot like Earth, where it's less about getting what you want and more about maintaining self-control to make sure you don't sin or cause harm to anyone. However, that would reduce the role of God in heaven to almost nothing. Anyone can sit on their feelings and suppress their desires. Only God can fulfill them. Next, what is the path to heaven? That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.